Here we go. S Rustici. Um, E4, let's see. Ah, time to play the French. I got a well rated player here. Plays the advanced variation. Okay, I'm just going to do the normal thing here. I played the C3 a bit early, but I don't think it matters. Uh, and just pile up pressure on the center. Yeah, so he's allowing me to take that pawn, but there's a trick uh, involving a check. So you need to block the check here. And then this is an actual gambit, the milner berry gambit. There's no longer a, a trick there because uh, my bishop is guarding the check here. Normally, yeah, white would take, bring the queen out here, and then bishop to uh, <clears throat> bishop to b five check would uh, win the queen. So, should I just take or should I retreat? Could just develop. Yeah, if I play the, um, yeah, it's just develop. If I take it, just brings his queen out, so it might help if I got a little more developed before I do that, or wait for him to take, or just retreat. Could retreat even to uh, the square. Okay, he decided to take after all. Now he needs to defend the um, e-pawn, I believe. Sometimes you don't have to defend it because it's too dangerous to take it. I don't know if this is one of those cases. Um, you know, maybe he could have played knight to um, knight to b5 there. If I take takes back with check and I'm still losing my queen so I, I would have to retreat my queen then let's just bring the queen back I wonder if I can take advantage of the softness on uh, f2 now get the knight out of the way and play bishop uh, c5 so we get this battery going. He can, uh, yeah, he can always play his knight here. So maybe that's not such a great idea. Anyway, yeah, he does the normal thing here. He's looking at the, um, looking at the F7 square. Can he bring another piece to attack it? That's the question. I don't see it at the moment. Maybe I could bring my bishop out to um, b4 even. Pin the knight against the rook. And then get castled. You know, yeah, I realize my bishop is covering the um, my bishop is covering the a4 square. So if I play bishop c5, I don't have to worry about knight a4. So that's a possibility. But his queen is defending f2, so the battery doesn't uh, accomplish anything immediately. Not sure why he's thinking for slow long in this particular
particular position. He seemed to be playing pretty quickly earlier. Maybe he's just slowing down on principle. <laughs> Realizes he's lost a pawn and is wondering, wondering where his compensation is. Ah, that's interesting. So he thought for a long time because I can play the move um, d5 to d4 and fork fork the bishop and the knight. So he has some tricky way to get out of that. The knight could come here or here to attack my queen, but in both cases I can take it. And I don't see any way for him to really pin that pawn. Hmm. Maybe you just overlook that. Sometimes you think too hard for too long and you overlook the obvious. Sometimes in a fork like this, the bishop can drop back and maintain the pen, and then you don't really get the benefits of the fork. But this is not one of those cases. I can just the bishop can't retreat, and I'll just take one of those two pieces. Okay, so he takes there. So he got his pawn back. <laughs> he take here now. Um, so that's hitting my queen. As I said, I'll probably just retreat here. Uh, you know, he can hop in with his knight to c7 or to d6, so I need to watch out for that. I guess knight c7 was the big threat there. Uh, but now I'm threatening just to take his knight. I've got two pieces attacking it. And if he gives me time to uh, get castled, say by defending the knight, yeah, he defends the knight, I develop this bishop, he brings a rook here, then I can just castle and then knight c7 is no longer a fork. So where to develop the bishop? I could put the bishop on c4, c5, kicks it. I kind of like that because it blocks the uh, knight's, the rook's view of c7. Yeah, let's go for this. And it'll keep his queen maybe tied down for defense of the f-pawn here. I could have considered just trading on the principle that trades are good for me when I'm a piece up, but um, but I think it's better to get my king to safety first. Don't be in too much of a rush. If I'm ahead, it should be okay. This is um, okay, I think. Uh, okay, still wants to do some kind of trick. So I could put my bishop on c6 here, hitting his queen. You can take the knight. I take the rook. Uh, it's getting complicated. Let's just step out of the way. Put the queen over here on the king side. So f7 is not not a big worry anymore. And uh, yeah, and then I'll get castled. He is attacking my uh, bishop once. And when he moves his bishop, he can attack it again. But my queen is defended by the knight. So I can um, I can just trade it off. Okay. Takes there. Ah, okay. He 
takes there so my queen is not defended by the knight, and then he can take care. Wow, he found a way back in the game. Okay, good play. So it's an even uh, position. I've got four pawns, five pawns, and he's got five pawns. It's two on one on this side and four on three on this side. All well, their pieces seem pretty active. I'm going to play rook to uh, b8 next, I think. So there must have been another way out of that. I don't believe I had to lose a piece there, but um, the move I played, queen to, yeah, it all started with that move, queen to uh, e7, getting out of the discovered attack. I thought that would be good enough. Or maybe castling was too optimistic. Yeah. So probably something instead of castling there was uh, was called for. Didn't see that idea. Bishop takes knight, unveiling an attack on my bishop and simultaneously removing a defender. Kind of doing two things at once. Okay, he noticed a weakness there. Let's uh, put the pressure on anyway. He can keep his queen on this diagonal and I can't um, take, I don't think. Well, maybe I could. I mean, the thing is, if I take here, I mean, Rick is saying, yeah, I can't, I can't allow that. I'm just getting a pawn. He's getting a rook. Yeah, so he does that. Ah, but now... Now there's a problem on the C file. can't move the queen and defend uh, c1. I can move the rook. Okay, yeah, that's true. Yeah, he has a choice of which rook to take. The rook on a8 goes with check. The rook on c7 the most natural but um, because he, then he can still threaten this rook but uh, I have this threat here okay I'm hitting the pawn this pawn and threatening the check and mate aha yeah, he's good at this. <laughs> okay, I can still give the check, but he can drop his rook back. But I can at least win a pawn. I guess I could have just taken that pawn directly, huh? <laughs> could have just taken it. So I, I well, I don't know. Was it, was it good or bad to pull his rook back? He, he needed to play a move like that anyway. Yep. Let's uh, let's get my forces organized here. Get my queen where I can protect the rook with a uh, move like rook to c8. Queen protects the pawn and and the rook. And um, start pushing. Start pushing my uh, pawn. So anyway, yeah, he got his king. He got his king out of trouble there. All right, gave his king some room to escape. I'm gonna try and get a passed pawn on the queen side if I can. 
the uh, four pawns versus four pawns that we have here, or even four versus three that we have on the king side is a, is a draw in a uh, rook and pawn endgame. Okay, rook here, check. King up, queen here, check. I'll start with queen here. Uh -huh. This one, I think I finally got him, huh? <laughs> right. Well, that was kind of a back-and-forth game, but uh, nice to come out on top. Anyway, I'll check this out in the postmortem and see you guys later. Bye.